we will talk we were talking about the static correction in the last lecture we wanted to know that if you truncate the modes from let us say n hat to n <coughs> what would be the loss of the contribution of x arising from the higher modes to the other total contribution. So, we started with this equation we said this may classical equation of motion where x is the response can be represented as an modal participation of the mode factor and that of q which is weightage of the mode. And once we agree that x can be represented as a displacement q obviously, x double dot and x dot can be represented as phi of q dot and phi of q double dot respectively substitute back I get what is called as a modal force after I pre multiply this equation with phi transpose and I already have a phi here. So, phi m phi transpose m phi will be a specific value phi transpose k phi will be a specific value phi transpose c phi will be known to me and I am talking about the modal force which was given to me as <coughs> let us say the phi vector transpose yeah is called as let us say f star which we call as modal force. When I pre multiply this equation phi m transpose I will get this value also phi r transpose for an rth vector is a modal force on r. So, one is interested to know what is the contribution of the higher missing modes in the total overall response that is what you are focusing at. Then now I split this response of equation 1a. Now, equation 1a can be rewritten as in two parts that is instead of having from r to n I have r to n hat and then n hat to separately as two e sets of equations because it is an algebraic sum linear superposition. So, I can split this. So, x can be written as summation of and summation of r equals 1 to n hat s equals n hat plus 1 to n phi r cure of t and phi s cures of t. I can split this. I think in the last uh, derivation there was I think equation number 4 or 5. Let us call this as equation number in this case as 2 as a continuation let us say equation number 2. What I am interested is to know what is the contribution of this specific component on x because I am going to neglect this. I do not want to consider the modes beyond n hat where n hat is much lower than n. I want to neglect the higher modes, but I want to see what is the influence of this in this. We have also said it is going to be static correction because m s q s double dot because now I am writing equation of motion in the s frame that is the degree of freedom from n hat to n. I can find q s as f s by k s minus m s q s double dot by k s minus c s q s dot by k s which can be f s by k s minus q s double dot by k s by m s minus 2 zeta s omega s m s q s double dot by k s which can be f s by k s minus q s double dot by omega s square minus k by m s omega square omega by omega goes away. So, 2 zeta s q s dot by omega s which we had in the last equation also we had the same. So, obviously, this becomes the dynamic component because they have velocity and acceleration this is static component and you see this component keeps on decreasing because as for higher frequencies this value will be keep on increasing it is a negative term therefore, from the static response or from q s which is the response of s modes which is from n hat plus 1 to n okay, on the overall response will keep on decreasing. Therefore, we can say the contribution from the 
static correction is dominant in this case. Kali equation this as let us say this as 3 and this as 4. We already know the modal force is given by which is F s I am talking about S modes which is from n hat plus 1 to n similar to the top. The same borrowed from equation 1 a same, but in terms of s. Hence, you can call this as equation 5 a. Hence, x which is equation uh, 3 in terms of q s written now as summation of r equals 1 to n hat and s equals n hat plus 1 to n q r phi r q r of t <coughs> no this is going to be i am going to replace this yes let's say q s of t same way q s is of course having a static correction of this order you know neglected so i'll expand this i'll expand this portion plus Yes, Q s is F s by K s, I will say 1 by K s. F s of course, is product of this. So, phi s transpose ok. I call this equation number phi b. Let us say phi b and phi c. In the last lecture, I think we stopped here and we want to show that how this correction can be modified. So, we will extend this from here. So, this may x. We are anyway not bothered about the first part of it because first part we are anyway executing and calculating x as a summation of contributions of q r and phi r. There is no argument in this. The argument will be now on what would be the influence of the missing values from n hat plus 1 to n on x. That is the argument here. Okay. Now, if you ask me a question that if I am going to find out what is the influence of those forces corresponding to n hat plus 1 to n on the total response, then obviously this will demand me to estimate phi s. It means I must have all the mode shapes with me. So, if I am having all the mode shapes with me, why should I look forward for a one which is contributing to the error of the total problem? So, my advice is not to compute or not to spend computational effort towards estimating omega s and phi s, where s is varying from n at plus 1 to n. I want to truncate the calculations, the, uh, the computation still n hat only, where n hat is much lower than n. So, a procedure should not demand from me that I am bound to estimate phi s. So, what I will do is I will rewrite this part of this equation as the total flexibility because I am taking about 1 by, one by k s, I am talking about k s inverse that is actually the flexibility matrix of the entire system. So, if I know the flexibility of the entire system, I subtract the flexibility of the system from r is 1 10 hat, I will actually get this okay? because I am talking about this missing mass where it demands flexibility of the remaining modes which is s part of it, s part is from n hat plus 1 to n, but what I will tell is I will take out the flexibility of the entire system which I call as k inverse, I will subtract the flexibility part of this, I will get this is it not. So, that is what I am indirectly doing. Therefore, without estimating omega s and f phi s, I will use only omega r and phi r, but I will find out the value of this contribution on x, okay? that is what I will write now here since B are truncating the modes till n hat, <coughs> the procedure shown in equation phi c demands 
estimate of phi s which is redundant because I will not have phi s with me, I will have only phi r. Also let phi s phi s transpose of f of f or let us say by k s is called as f s hence second part of equation phi c can be written as summation of s n hat plus 1 to n f s of f. One by case of phi s of phi s transpose summation s n hat plus 1 to n can be written as 1 by k s of course is k inverse where remember k s is only for those values of s modes which is from n hat plus 1 to n whereas k is a stiffness factor for the entire system which is having the modes from 1 to n total. So, from the total flexibility I subtract summation of r equals 1 to n at 1 by k r phi r phi r transpose ok and I have these values with me k r I have phi r I have and phi r transpose I can compute. So, by this way I can easily find out this component of equation phi c which is required for me which can give me the value of f s ok. So, hence the above equation can be now rewritten as k inverse minus r equals 1 to n hat can I call this as f r because already I said if you use subscript for the entire system I call this as f s I call this as f s. Now, look compare f s with this is one and the same except the subscript is r now. So, I can call that as f r ok. Therefore, x is now summation of summation of r equal to 1 to n at phi r of q r summation remove this we will simply say this is going to be k inverse minus summation of r equals 1 to n hat f r of f ok this is actually f s of f in this case f r of f so, that is a modal force ok this is from n hat to n hat plus 1 to n I call s yes. this is from r to n hat I call that as r ok it is one and the same the modal force I got the new x now this particular term in this equation 6 is called static correction. This is also called missing mass correction.
Now, the static correction accounts for the errors that arise from the omission of higher modes in the response. Let us apply this and see how I can compute x. Example, I will take two examples. I have a system whose mass and k matrix and frequencies and mode shapes are given to me. Let us say mass is this value. It is a 4 by 4 system 8, 8, 4 and 4. All other elements are 0. <coughs> maybe you can take this as a multiplier of 10 power 7, 10 power 10, whatever may be the value. We are not bothered about the multiplier. Let us talk about k, a m and k matrix is and omega 1 0.2028, omega 2 square 1.128, omega 3 2.8385, omega 4 4.3306, 5 matrix zero nine one four one eight seven two. is not symmetric actually slightly there is a variation. <coughs> 3 0 0 2 that is the second mode. There is a negative term here also, okay. this is also minus. So, 1, 2 and 3. So, now I want to work out the modal participation factor. So, in this problem I actually have all the 4 modes and 4 frequencies, but I want to know do I have to include all of them for calculating the x of value I want to see. So, let us work out the modal participation factor. Which we derived in the last lecture, which is given by p k participation factor of the kth mode, which is given by
let us call C equation number 1. See if we really wanted to find P1, I can expand this, K is 1, only I is count. So, I should say Wn phi 1 1 plus W 2 phi 2 1, you will see the second count will always remain as 1, okay, only the first count will change plus W 3 phi 3 1 plus W 4 phi 4 1, <coughs> W 1 phi 1 1 square, W 2 phi 2 1 square, W 3 phi 3 1 square, W 4 phi 4 1 square. So, obviously, if you look at the second subscript is unity, it means we are referring to the first column of this vector, which is actually the corresponding first mode shape of the system. That is why it is called the modal participation of the first mode. Okay. So, now you have double use, of course, you have mass W is mg, you will multiply g here, you will multiply g here, they will cancel. So, it does not make any difference in the calculation anyway. So, let us substitute them W1, W2, W3, W4, we have we have the first column, can you give me what is P 1? So, just for establishing the relationship W 1 is 8, 8 into 0 0.0914 plus 8 into 0 0.1872 plus 4 into 0.2643 plus 4 into 0 0.3056 divided by 8 into 0 0.0914 square and so on so forth. We will just substitute them and get me the value. Similarly, get me the values of P2, P3 and P4. First, let us find out the value of P1. How much is this? How much? How much? Is it positive? So, can you give me the value of P2? Now, if you substitute this, the count is going to change for k. So, if you rewrite this equation here, it will be W1 phi 1 2 okay, plus W2 phi 2 2 plus phi 3 2 plus phi 4 2 divided by sum of the squares of this. So, only the second count will change. Now, we are looking for the second column of phi. Okay. Now, you can now we can expect the negative values also because the second column onwards we have negative numbers also depending upon the contribution of that in the total the sum of p k 2 3 4 can also become negative. Okay. and so on. So, this comes to minus 1.6383, this comes to P 3 comes to minus 0.9831 and P 4 becomes positive of 1569. So, these are the modal participation factors. Ultimately, I want to actually know what is the contribution of the mass to be added to the system, because you know this factor multiplied by the mass contribution will give me the total response in terms of force acting on the system. So, let us try to find out the modal mass. Now, I have found out the modal participation factors alone, I can find the modal mass, because modal mass will now tell me an idea how much mass should I include? Okay. Model mass m k that is the model mass of the kth mode is given by
i k square ok. These are all w's therefore, there is a g here. So, I want to find m 1 let us try to find m 1 that is the first modal mass. I am talking about ma w therefore, it is m g I have only mass matrix with me. So, I should say 9.81 into 8 ok <coughs> or I can simply say 9.81 of 8 into the first mode I think and write down the value which is I do not have the value with me. So, the first mode that is 511 plus 8 into 521 plus 4 into 531 plus 4 into 541 of square divided by 9.81 of 9.81 of 8 into 5 1 1 square plus 8 into 5 2 1 square plus 4 into 5 3 1 square plus 4 into 5 4 1 square which gives me the modal mass in the first mode as 9.81 Similarly, if you try to find out m 2, m 3 and m 4, I will write down the values for your convenience here. The summation of this should be actually equal to 24 because the mass matrix had the values of 8, 8, 4 and 4 should be equal to 24 actually ok. I think it should make up 24, 20 this is 23, 23.9 it should be 24 ok. Then let us try to find out the contribution of m 1 versus m total that is 20.322 by 24 in terms of percentage. It comes to approximately 86 percent just check this. How much? 80? Ok, 84.6 percent. Obviously, you can find out for all. So, what we want to convey through this is either you find the modal participation factor, multiply this factor with the corresponding response in every mode, get the total response, or check the modal mass contribution in the total system and try to see up to what mass I must include. So, you remember this is about the mode truncation, this is inclusion of inertia force in the respective modes what we call as modal forces ok. Either you check this or you check this, but I want to show you both because from these numbers you actually could not make out what is the contribution of this except that you will know that some modes will contribute to the negative contribution to x ok. So, one physically please understand that all the modes will not add up for the final response. Some of them contribute positive some of them contribute negative also. Is it clear? Therefore, they do not just add up. Linear superposition does not mean always it is adding up. There can be compromise also because mode shape is actually plus and minus both right. But if you look at this participation m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4 on the contrary of p 1, p 2, p 3, p 4, here you can easily make out up to which mode I must consider in this analysis ok. So, if you add the m 2 versus m total also you will see that is 11 percent ok. So, m 1, m 2 alone will contribute to close to about 95 percent in this problem right. Either you can use m 1 alone to compute x which will be equal to the total response or m 1, m 2 which will amount more or less 100 percent of the system ok. So, there is no need to work out all omegas and all phi's though we had this problem we found out omegas and phi's, but it was not required to find out all omegas and phi's ok. Because you will really appreciate to know m 1 I need to know only the first modes, please understand that. To know m 2, I need to know only the second modes, 
I need not have to know the third and fourth mode. So, you can go step by step. First find out the first mode or using stored law or LRH find out the first mode and frequency, find out M1, find out P1. If you are able to convince 90 percent closer in the first mode itself, stop there. If you are not, go for the second mode by influence coefficient method, iterate, get orthogonal modes, get the second mode and second frequency, then get M2 and P2. Okay? So, you can proceed like this. Instead of working out all omegas and all phi's and then truncating them, keep on truncating them parallelly, so that you can save a lot of computation. Is it clear? That is the advantage here. We will do one more problem. Is there any doubt here? Is it clear how we are employing the modal participation factor or mass or modal mass in the total response? Okay? How we are significantly understanding the physical meaning of this contribution in total x of t? Are we able to understand this? We will do one more problem and see how x can be calculated. Now, we are only truncating the modes in terms of ma mass participation. Now, we will see how x can be calculated because ultimately I am interested in the response of the system. So, we will do ex example 2 where we talk about modal combination rule. Let us say m is a mass matrix of 4 by 4 where the diagonal elements are all 215 tons, all of them same and this is 0. And omega 1 square So, m is nothing but 215 tons or 1000 kg and k kilometer per meter. So, you get so many frequencies, mode shapes will be corresponding to this matrix. I am not very sure about this particular mode shape. There should be 3 0 crossing, I am not sure, remaining order ok. So, let us try to find out the modal participation factors. Open a table, it is easy to do it in a tabular form. Mass point 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let us say Mi phi i. let us say phi i 1. So, in this case 0 0.36, 0 0.37, 0 0.38, 0 0.39, 0 0.40, 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.45, 0 0.46, 0 0.47, 0 0.48, 0
1.67, 0 0.89 and 1.0. We need m i phi i 1. Then I need the square of that. work out pk because pk is given by the equation So, can you get me these values by multiplying simply and summation of this ratio of these two it will give me my P 1. Can you find out this what is P 1? So, I should say sum of m i phi 1 sum of m i phi 1 square and therefore, p 1 sum of m i phi i 2 sum of m i phi i 2 square and therefore, p 2 sum of m i phi i 3 sum of m i phi i 3 square therefore, p 3 sum of m i phi i 4 sum of m i phi i 4 square therefore, p 4. So, this, this is 627.8 am I right? 1.232. Can you find error for the second mode? This is 537.5. All these numbers I am writing are indicative, you must check them yourself. Okay? I may also make some numeric mistakes. 1962.99. 0.274. Similarly, m i phi i 3 minus 46.44 and p 3 is negative. 0 0.098. Are these numbers tallying or not? Once you know this, the second step can compute the modal mass participation. Which is given by a general equation.
let us try to find out m1 directly from this data. It is easy for us to now do it from here. See how we are doing it. It is easy because I want that sum it is available here, which can be 9.81 of 627.8 divided by 9.81 into 9.81 of 509.67 it directly give me the value of m1. How much is this? 773.32 tons is that okay? Is that all right? Where the total mass is 215 into 4. Is 860, is it not? So, m1 by m total is about 90 percent, you see that? It is close to around 90 percent. So, only first bound itself is sufficient for to compute x of t in this case. Okay. So, now let us see what are the different combination rules available in the literature to compute x? Because I know the modal participation factor. Now, there are two things to understand from P of k. There are two things. One, P of k significantly tells me in physical terms that the modes not only contribute positive to the response, but they also counter produce the response. Okay? If the mass uh, moves to the right, there may be a possibility because of the vibration, one of the mass can move to the left. Therefore, the total overall response may get compromised also. It gives me that meaning. So, there is a physical interpretation. The second interpretation is, if I combine this with x on a specific mode etcetera, I will get the contribution of x of that mode in the overall response. That is what is called modal participation factor. Okay. Whereas, the modal mass indicates me how much mass should I include in my system. So, this number will tell me at what peak I must stop. Okay. So, this will give me an idea about the truncation, this will give me an idea about participation of x in the final response. Okay. There are two different, but both are important. Okay. <coughs> so, once we know this, there are different combination rules available to compute x, because now I have modes response in each mode. What is the response in first mode? What is the response in second mode, third mode etcetera? I also know what is the contribution of that mode in the overall response. I also know how many modes should I include in my system. Okay, now, I have three data is independent. I have response in each mode separately. I have the contribution of each response to the total mode in the total response separately and I have how many more should I include in my response I have the data. Now, I want to combine these all the three information to find out the overall response I call this is combination rule. One combination rule is CQC rule complete quadratic combination rule. Interestingly, more international courts including IS 1893 talk about these kind of combination rules very well in advance. Okay? We have enough data available in the Indian standard courts for finding out the response for any lateral uh, system subject to lateral loads. I am talking about an earthquake engineering code which is IS 1893 which gives me the combination rule. Nevertheless, for any lateral force this rule can be applied. Okay? It is not only related to any kind of force which being an earthquake force. Any lateral force the system vibrates, system <coughs> uh, develops frequency and mode shape, I want to combine them. I can use these rules. Okay? Uh, complete quadratic combination rule. So, this says that if you want to find x 1, the square root of 2 summations i equals 1 to r, j equals 1 to r, x i 
rho i j a x j. Where rho i j is called cross modal coefficient. This is actually an indirect verification of Maxwell Betty's reciprocal theorem, which we discussed way back in some of the lectures here. Okay, phi 1, 2 and phi 2, 1. Okay, we talked about that. This is actually the cross modal coefficient. You will see when you work out, they will be equal. Okay? And of course, in this count, R is the number of modes considered. This will tell you how many modes you are considering for the analysis. And x i is the peak response quantity in i th and j th, because there are two x i and x j modes. Now, there is a very interesting question I want to ask you. Anyway, I am not going to solve this. I have given you the value. You can know the values for phi i j. I will give you the equation rho i j. So, you can solve this and try to find out the x value. The cross correlation coefficient cross sorry modal cross coefficient is given by 8 z r square. One point five. I'm sorry, this is one minus Let me check the equation first. Where zeta is called modal damping ratio. Now, it is very important here for you to recollect in Rayleigh rates or in Rayleigh damping in Kahe, you see the modal damping should be equal for uniform, it is a classical damping. If it is non classical, they may not be equal in different modes. Okay? So, in this case, we assume a percentage maybe 2 to 5 percent. We mean it is a classical damping. Beta is the frequency ratio which is omega j by omega i, where omega i is the ith frequency and omega j is the jth frequency. So, if really if you want to find rho 1 2 let us say i j. So, beta is always j over i you want to find rho 2 1 it is 1 over 2 and so on okay, be careful in substituting this value. So, once you get this number you know the response of peak value in each mode separately use this relationship to get the overall response of c q c you got other rules also sum of root of squares s r s s rule and so on so forth there are many rules available. I would request you to urge to suggest, I mean read a classical textbook on the modal combination rules which will help you to find out the estimates or you can refer to my textbook which I am on dynamic analysis and design of offshore structures, we have talked about that. We have also done an example on this, please look at that example and try to find out how we can get the x 1 value. So, it is very important for us to know that where do we <coughs> imply modal truncation in terms of the rules applied here. So, this will give me how to estimate the number of modes required for the analysis, once I fix that number, I will then find out the cross modal coefficient combination for the different modes response and try to find out the answer which is going to the sum of the final response. On the other hand physically, if I have let us say two modes, where these are the two responses of the tip m 1 and m 2, tip m 1 and m 2 respectively let us say this should give me hypothetically the final response of the system which we do not know actually depending upon the summation of these two. Okay? 
So, this is a physical interpretation of the responses in two different modes if they are widely spaced. If they are closely spaced, there are other rules available in the literature. Okay? So, anyway, we have no time to discuss that. Still, I have got good references given to you, please read them. And there are many research papers available in checking which method is applicable to what kind of closely spaced modes. There is an intrinsic research people have done in this. Okay? So, modal combination rule itself has undergone a very intensive research in earthquake engineering or uh, in structural engineering. Please read those papers which are referred in the NPTEL website. So, you will know how what is the weightage of CQC. CQC is one of the well applicable combination rule applied to estimate the final response. So, our job is to estimate the final response. Now, what we are confused is will this response be contributed from all the modes or only few modes. Now, we have answered this in the past two lectures that how we can truncate the modes and how we get the combination. Okay? Now, we terminate the lectures on module 1 now. We have in module 1, we spoke completely about dynamics of offshore mean structures. We started with introduction to floating, I mean uh, structural systems and offshore platforms, how form based design dominates and how the platform geometry evolved from a fixed type from shallow waters to that of deep water platforms and in now we are talking about ultra deep water platforms. When you talk about conceptualization of platform structural design, we generally do not have the data about the frequency and the response behavior of the system. Therefore, we need to know the mathematical models of finding out the frequency and mode shapes of this. We started with single degree, we attempted to solve them in multi degrees. We know there are different methods available to write equations of motion. We wrote equations of motion, derived stiffness matrices. We also understood when the mass matrix will become diagonal. To make it diagonal, how to select the degrees of freedom. If they are not diagonal, what is the implication of that in the final equation of motion? How to get stiffness matrix? How to get flexibility matrix without inverting them? And we also saw how many modes we must consider, how to estimate all the modes and frequencies by different methods, which is computationally efficient, and we will give all the methods will give you the same answer more or less. So, we found out them, and ultimately we said that <coughs> yes, the model combination rules can suffice me to find out the response in a given system form. So, the next module will address on fluid structure and wave structure interaction in detail. So, we will pick up about 6, 7 example platforms starting from jacket structures, articulated towers, multi legged hinged platforms, triceratops, TLPs, FSRUs and FPSOs and SPAR. We will discuss them in detail, we will derive the mass and stiffness matrices and damping matrices here, we will plug them in a software, run the analysis and show you the results and interpret the results from the research papers directly. So, when you read a paper you know what do they, what model of dynamic analysis they followed, I will show you. Uh, online how it can be done here. So, that in second module we will focus on that completely which is dedicated to FSI fluid structure interaction. Once we understand the basic dynamics and application of design in dynamics and FSI applications on dynamics, then we move on to stochastic dynamics and see how can you estimate fatigue damages in a given structure using stochastic dynamic models. So, which will which will advance method of doing dynamic analysis of structures, where we will talk about non linear in dynamic analysis to part and we will stop there. That is the idea what we have. So, we will I think now we are running about 28 lecture here, I will have another 22 or 24 lectures more. So, we will close around 52, 54 lectures in total to complete the entire module. So, the registration for the examination is open. Generally, if you look at the application of dynamics in structures, people generally discuss maximum part of the application here and take diversion from here in earthquake engineering, wind engineering etcetera. We will also divert from here, take our understanding of dynamics to ocean structures from the next uh, class onwards. Okay. So, it is important that we must uh, brush up these understandings. There are many textbooks available, most of the textbooks focus on dynamic analysis and design um, in, in basics, but anyway my textbook addresses the design concepts also parallelly and I have given you lot of application examples in the textbook. The exam registration is open, it will open till 31st March uh, for the uh, for people in India and then for people in abroad it will open from 1st April onwards. The exam will be likely on 10th and 17th of May which will be contesting over 2500, 3000 people in international board. So, you will have a golden, silver and bronze certificates qualified by and certified by IIT for qualifying this examination. So, I urge that you must register for the examination, so that you get the benefit of this complete course in terms of its credit transfer. Okay? Thank you.